Aloha gang, thanks for joining us for another edition of Chicken Skin Moments with Pastor Dane, uh, where I like to share cool stuff I've found in the Bible with you, enough to give you a small chicken skin um, moment. Anyways, today I want to talk to you a little bit briefly about what I call the holiness of God. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second, but I want to begin by giving you a fun example um, from a common misperception, and that is to do with angels. Um, I was driving around one time once and I saw this bumper sticker. In fact, I've seen it a few times and it says, I don't drive faster than my angel can fly. And it has a little picture of kind of a little fuzzy angel with wings. And it's a very beatific kind of, oh, I have peace with because my angel's with me. And it's really interesting because, you know, the way the Bible talks about angels is really different. They're not usually spoken of in the Bible as sort of friendly, um, happy instruments of, of God's message, but they're usually very scary. The reason I say that is in the Bible, whenever an angel shows up, usually the first person, uh, first thing the angel says to a person is, don't be afraid. <laughs> now, why is that? What is it about an angel that causes people to immediately be afraid? And what I'm going to submit to you is that I believe it's because they carry with them a whiff of God's holiness. They are messengers sent from heaven. And that holiness is scary. Why? Well, because the definition of holiness itself means not only pure, which is one definition of it, but it means significantly separate or other. And oftentimes things that are so radically different and other come out very scary. Now, I can give you a couple um examples. One I want to give you is from um, chapter 6 of Isaiah, where Isaiah appears in the temple of God. Now picture this for a moment. Isaiah is a prophet. Well, not yet, actually. He's about to become a prophet, but he's considered to be the most righteous man alive. P picture that, most righteous man alive. And he has a vision, and in his vision, God brings him up into the throne room of God, where we believe it is a Christophany, Christ himself, seated on his throne. And Isaiah, when he sees the holy, holy, holiness of God on his throne, it causes him to, well, in my own words, dive to his face, but he uses an interesting word. He says, I am an unclean man of unclean lips. I am completely undone. And that Hebrew word for undone means I am smashed into little bits. Now, what was it about God's holiness that caused the most righteous man alive to say, I feel as though I am crushed into little bits. And the truth of the matter is, is that he had now experienced what real righteousness was, what real holiness was, that any sort of idea of his own purity, his own goodness, his own righteousness was absolutely destroyed in the face of God's actual righteousness, which is what the Bible calls holiness. Now, it's interesting, the theologian R.C. Sproul actually had a very similar account once where he describes he came into the presence of God, and R.C. Sproul says, I had two distinct feelings. On the one hand, I was absolutely terrified, but on the other hand, I felt as though I was being drawn towards that force. In other words, God's holiness is something so incredibly good that it's both terrifying and yet we yearn for it. Another good example might be from the writings of C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia, um, where uh, Susan is introduced to the idea of this lion by the name of Aslan, who of course is a picture of Christ. And she's asking Mr. Beaver about it. And she says, oh, a lion? I find I might be afraid of that. Is he safe? And the response of Mr. Beaver is classic C.S. Lewis. He says, safe? Heavens, no. But I tell you, he's good. And I tell you, he is indeed the king. And I love that. He's not safe, but he's good. Another guy, Rick Bunshu, once told me one time, he said, picture God's holiness like a resting lion. Oh yeah, he might be a lion that you could go up and pet, but you wouldn't poke him in the eye. <laughs> There's a lot of force behind that. Now, by the way, the great thing about holiness, though it is terrifying to us in its sort of unfiltered sense because it reveals our sin, it's other, it reveals our, our lack of goodness, um, the reason that we can't be in the presence of holiness is actually a really good thing. It means two things. God is not tainted by sin. In him, there is no shadow. There is no darkness. He's a pure, good God. And for us, that's good news. Of course, it reveals our sinfulness, 
But the good news, of course, is that Jesus Christ comes down out of heaven, takes on the form of a man. And even though he never sins, he goes to a cross for our sins. He indeed bears our sins. He becomes our sin for us. And the good news about that is, is if we believe in him, then our sins can be forgiven. And then ultimately when we die, we get to go to heaven. And now we can exist within the holiness, together in the holiness of God, with God, without shame and without fear. And the Bible teaches that we will exist like that forever and ever. And there will be no pain and no suffering and no death and dying in heaven. Why? Because anything that is not pure holiness will be have burned up completely, will be dealt with completely, and we are safe in the loving arms of our holy, holy, holy God for all eternity. Isn't that good news? Hope you enjoyed that. Stick around. Maybe they got another cool video for you later. Hey gang, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, tell your friends, uh, write your congressman, whatever you got to do. But thanks for watching the video. You're going to want to check out this next video as well. And other than that, we'll see you next time. God bless.